The assembly of the Easy 3 d K7 could not have been any simpler. Everything came well packaged in a small box with full color instructions, a micro SD card, a package of filament, extra motors, and the mostly assembled printer. You just have to use four screws to attach the X-axis with the provided screwdriver. The Easy 3 d K7 comes with a print volume of 100 by 100 by 100 millimeters. It uses a direct drive extruder with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and can print at a resolution of 0.1 to 0.4 microns. It can print at a speed from 10 to 40 millimeters per second and at a temperature of 180 to 230 degrees Celsius. It is also equipped with a removable magnetic build plate with a perforated surface that is not heated so you can only really print PLA on this machine. There is also a cooling fan installed to help with the printing of PLA. This machine comes with its own proprietary slicer but can use Cura or Simply 3D as well. So to use the machine you plug in the provided 12 volt power cord and press the power button if it didn't already turn on. You then press the home button on the front and allow the machine to go through its homing cycle. This brings me to the first thing that I thought was odd about this machine. There is only one limit switch for the Z axis on this machine. The X and Y just keep going and put stress on the motors after they reach the end. I'm assuming that they just move 100 millimeters, so no matter where they started, they just figure that they'll end at zero. You then need to unplug the machine to start the leveling process. The bed is leveled by four small tension springs like many other printers. You just need to move the axis by hand and use the paper height technique to level everything. One thing that I was not expecting was how difficult it was to move the X and Y axis by hand. You can see that I even lowered the bed further than I thought I had to because I thought the nozzle was touching. It wasn't. The axes are just difficult to move. So I got everything as level as I could. I then plugged the machine back in and held the power button down for 3 seconds which raises the z-axis 10 millimeters. I did this a few times just to get the nozzle up from the bed. I then took out a sample filament that came with the machine to run my first test. The filament felt a little more matte than the brands I normally use but came with the machine so I thought I might try it. On the front of the K7 you need to flip the switch to the left which starts the feed process. The nozzle will take a minute to heat up and then you will hear the direct drive extruder start to turn. You then just need to help feed the filament into the top and when you see it start to ooze out of the bottom you turn the feed switch back to the middle. The K7 will print from either a direct connection to your computer or from the micro SD card that came with the unit. The only problem with the SD card is that there's no display on the machine, so there's no way to choose the file that you want to print. I removed all other files that came on the SD card and just kept the single file for the rocket that I wanted to print. I inserted the card, pressed the play button, and the printer heated up and started printing. And failed with the adhesion while drawing out the raft. So I adjusted the leveling, went to hit print again, and failed again. So why don't we try that old staple of some Aquanet hairspray. And fail. So I decided to adjust the leveling lower so the first layer was a little closer than I normally do, and success. The first thing I was able to successfully print on this machine was a little rocket that came loaded on the SD card. It actually looked pretty nice. It's not perfect, but something that actually works, so I was pretty happy with it. So now I know that it can print, so I decided to hook the machine up to my computer so I could control it through Cura, since this whole one file at a time on the SD card and plugging and unplugging the machine to force the motors to move for leveling really wasn't working for me. There are instructions that come with the K7 that explain how to do this, so I won't go over exactly the steps on how to set this up, but for me to run the rest of the test, it was well worth it. I can control the machine through Cura and the live monitor. In the slicer profile, I also changed my G-code start code to draw out a line of filament to help prime the nozzle during printing. 
I will put that code in the description of the video if you're interested in that. So the next thing I printed was a Benshi. It printed okay but not really the smoothest print and seemed to have lots of shifting issues. I then tried to print a little Easter Island statue which did a lot better but still something seemed a little bit off to me. So I decided to print a test cube to make sure everything was dialed in nicely. So after I printed it, I noticed the X looked to be printing much too close to the left hand side of the cube. I then checked the tension of the X axis belt and it was pretty loose, but I didn't see a way to tighten that belt. On the front of the Y axis, I can see where you can tighten the belt, but nothing is clearly visible for the X axis. So I removed the front and back plastic panel of the box that contained the X axis to expose the motor. There I could see I could tighten the tension by unscrewing the motor, pulling it back, and retightening. After that I did another cube and the dimensions and center of the X in the print were much better. So I printed a few more things on this printer like this vase, which again worked, but not great. I also tried this much harder to print light diffuser thing, which also worked with lots of stringing, but it still worked. Finally, I printed this remix of the Tush spool holder, which brings me to my first design gripe about this machine. The placement of the spool holder is in a place where it is almost impossible for any size spool not to hit the Y axis while printing. While many spools are almost the same size as this machine, it makes more sense to come up with a solution to get the filament off of the machine itself, so this spool holder is a good option and can be printed on the machine. My second issue is the design of the hot end and extruder. The hot end is a part where the nozzle and the heater are combined into one piece. If you ever have to replace that, you have to buy the whole piece as a unit and can't replace it with a cheap and available replacement nozzle. I saw this one on AliExpress for about $9 US. There you can also buy an upgraded heat bed for the printer, which I'm sure would help with the adhesion issues, but also would need a firmware update to use and cost about $20 with shipping to the US. This would also require an updated 60 watt power supply as well. The last issue is that the X axis has a bit of a rigidity issue. The entire gantry shifts back and forth about 1 to 2 millimeters while printing. It's hard to see from the video how much that is, but you can kind of see it. This makes it almost impossible to have a great deal of accuracy using this machine. So for my final thoughts on the Easy 3 d K7. I might be coming at this as a more experienced 3D printer that notices all of the issues and might be missing who this machine is actually intended for. It wasn't until my daughter came in and was so excited about this machine that I really realized who this is made for and she asked me if she could have it since I have many larger machines. This is really intended as a learning tool or a toy for children. Think of it more as a souped up easy bake oven 3D printer more than a reliable tool. There is software that comes with this printer that allows kids to make their own designs that I didn't really dive into, but that's really who this is for. My daughter didn't care about the stringing or dimensions or the layer consistency. All she cared about was holding a little toy in her hand that appeared out of nowhere. At under $99 and tiny, this is a great thing to have tucked away in the corner of your classroom or even on a desktop out of the way. There are many other printers out there a little more expensive with many more features, but if you are truly looking for a bare bones and cheapest that you can get 3D printer as a teaching tool or novelty, then this is always an option. Thanks again for watching and I hope this video was helpful in some way. Please do like and subscribe if you like this and we'll see you guys next time.